In this series, we're going to look at taking a stream from your device's camera and uh, we're going to basically stream it to a video element on the page here inside of this grey box. So at the moment, I'm on uh, just localhost, just testing. This does need through, to be done through a web server as opposed to actually doing it locally. So make sure you are actually running some kind of local web server or even public web server. Um, so if I refresh here, it, it asks me if I want to use the camera. So I'm going to hit allow and you'll see that all just load up there and there I am. So um, this is basically what we're going to be doing. And then from this later on, what you can do is, like I said, take elements like canvas, imprint this onto um, elements like that and then and then do what you want with it. So let's take a look at building the code. It is extremely simple, probably sort of 30 lines or, or less. Um, and this will allow you to do exactly what you can see me doing here. And then from there on, the possibilities are endless. So let's take a look at the code. So we're pretty much starting from scratch here. Um, the only thing I've done is, is marked out my document. And I've linked in my main.css style sheet. And I have a JavaScript file linked in here at the bottom just before the ending of the body tag. That should be pretty self-explanatory. We write our styles in here. These are going to be very minimal. And then the video.js file is how we access our camera and uh, grab that and stream it to that video element. So really, the first thing to do is start building the markup on this page. What exactly do we need to, to get this uh, going? Well, we don't need a div for the class of booth, but I'm just going to do this just so we contain it in a nice area. And then later on, you might want to uh, change this around. So in terms of the booth, then let's just start this up. We're going to give this a width of 400 pixels. Uh, let's give this a sort of gray background, nothing too interesting. So CCC will do. And I'll give this a border of 10 pixels, solid. And we'll do DDD. And then we'll do margin auto, just so this is centered in the middle. So let's just uh, put some text in here or something just to test this. And there we go. So that's looking OK. We can focus on the JavaScript side of this now. OK, so to be able to stream a video to an element, this needs to be a video element. Um, so typically, you would apply a source here. But we're not doing that because we don't have a video that we want to apply. That's that's not what we're doing. We're taking this from our webcam. So I'm going to give this an ID just so we can target it with JavaScript. We're not going to be using any JavaScript libraries, so no jQuery or anything like that. And I'm going to give this a width and a height. So I'm going to say 400 in width. And for the height, uh, let's do 300. So you can play around with this. You can even set it using JavaScript if you want. OK, uh, I'm also going to put autoplay on there. So this video element is now pretty much ready to go. The rest is done with JavaScript. So let's uh, focus on that. Remember, this is uh, linked in here at the bottom. So make sure you've done that. OK, so we're going to create a self-invoking function. Um, this just keeps all of the variables that we're going to create in here uh, away from the global namespace. You might obviously have an application already, and you might be dealing with best practices there. But for now, I'm just going to wrap it in this. And essentially, all this means is anything in here upon uh, page running will be automatically run. So the first thing to do then is target that video element that we created. So we're going to create a variable here called video, and that's going to be document dot. And then we have the get element by ID method, which, as you probably guessed, takes an element on your page by its ID. In this case, remember, we called the um, element video. We gave it an ID of video. So that's fairly easy. OK, so the next thing to do then, uh, in actual fact, let's do this part now. We're going to store the um, URL API in here. So we're going to say vendor URL. And all this is, is it's the ability to manipulate, create URLs. And it's supported differently in two different browsers, uh, in WebKit and uh, normal implementation. So what we need to do is we need to separate this by an OR operator. And we're going to say, first of all, window.url, which is the standard implementation. Then we have a WebKit implementation. So we have um, window.webkit URL. And you can check these out inside of your console. If you open up your developer console, you can do window.url. That's not there. WebKit URL is there. You can see that's auto completing for me. And you can uh, see that code being executed there. Uh, not executed uh, output there. So now that we've got this, what we need to do next 
is determine the uh, namespaced function for getting media or the method for getting media. And that's exactly the same with the vendor URL. Uh, this is under navigator this time. So we're going to basically assign something to navigator.getMedia. So we're going to overwrite this with the browser specific vendor, uh, the um, browser specific implementation. And this is called get user media. So all we're doing here is we're saying navigator dot get user media. That's the standard implementation. Or and I'm going to bring this down another line just to make it a little bit more readable. We have navigator dot webkit get user media, which you can imagine is the webkit prefix version. We also have the uh, the Mozilla prefix version and the Microsoft prefix version. So navigator dot moz get user media and then finally navigator dot ms get user media so that's that covered in terms of different browser support at the time of recording i believe all of these are actually required uh, that may change in which case you can refactor your code but for now we're just really playing around so you know it doesn't matter too much so now we want to capture video and the way that we do this, because at the moment, uh, let's just go back to here. At the moment, all that's happening is we have this video element, which is uh, the width and height that we specified, but obviously we're not streaming anything to it. So we're going to say navigator.getMedia. We uh, assigned one of these to that up here, remember. Okay, so this is a method which takes uh, a few objects. The first one is whether you want video or audio. So it's basically the properties that you want this to hold. So I'm going to create an object there and just pull this down for readability. And we're going to say video true. And then we're going to say audio false. We don't necessarily want audio to be streamed through if we have uh, that ability. So we're going to we're going to ignore that one. OK, so for the second object here. Uh, oh, sorry. This is a not an object. This is a callback. This is basically what happens uh, when it's successful and we have access to the stream in one of these arguments. So for example, I could console.log the stream. Let's take a look at what happens in our console here. Oops, uh, webkit get user media. Ah, okay. So it does require that we actually pass the third element. I was going to go onto that in a moment. But this is basically the callback when there is in fact an error. So this means an error occurred. And you can grab the error code with the code property on this. So it's error like the argument we just passed through dot code like so so let's go back and see what this uh, console logs out for us in in here when we hit allow that's at the point where it gives us this media stream here so that's great we've got all this information but what do we do with it well we need to place it within the video element otherwise we, we're not going to be able to see the stream and we need to use the create object url method on this vendor url api that we uh, stored up here so all I'm going to do is I'm going to say video, which is remember the video element that we captured earlier uh, up here. We're going to say video.src, that's obviously source, and then it's vendor URL dot, and then like I just said a moment ago, the create object URL method. And in that, we pass the stream. Done. So now what we can do is we can say video.play because we need to force this to be able to play. Yeah. Oh, actually, I think it's on autoplay, but we'll do this anyway. So we've got video.play there. We now are grabbing the um, stream from the webcam, which is so simple, it's unbelievable. We're applying the source to the video element, and then we are playing that video. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So it's asking me if, if it wants to use the camera, I hit allow, and there we go, we get the webcam stream back again. And in Chrome, it just so happens that it has this little uh, icon up here which is quite useful to see if anyone is uh, spying on you so that is pr pretty much it we've used very very minimal code like I said only 22 lines long and that doesn't include line uh, empty lines here uh, just to capture the video from your webcam and output it to the screen and this is actually going to work in uh, other browsers as well because we have in fact included the uh, vendor prefixed uh, versions of get user media here so we've now used the webcam on our device. Give it a go on other browsers. And uh, yeah, this is pretty cool and very, very easy. 
So from here on, you can do things like put it onto the canvas, which we have a lesson for. And you can also do things like take snapshots, take pictures, which we also have a lesson for as well. So uh, there we go. There's a lot you can do with the camera.